Welcome to my expat health insurance journey in the Philippines. Moving to a new country can be exciting, but it's crucial to actually prioritize your overall health and well-being if you're gonna to move to a new country. Here are five must-know tips for expat health insurance in the Philippines. Tip number one, start early. You will have a one-year waiting period on pre-existing conditions on most insurance plans in the Philippines. It's not unlike any other country in that respect. So you'll have a one-year period before they'll actually cover any pre-existing conditions that you have. That could be crucial. So my advice would be, and this advice I didn't take on my own because I didn't think about it before I went on my health insurance search, but if you're still in the West, if you haven't retired yet, it's a good idea to contact an insurance company, do all your due diligence, but buy that policy a year before you actually come to the Philippines so that when you get here, you're already covered. Research and choose your health insurance company before you ever move, and this will give you peace of mind before you ever even arrive here. I use Pacific Cross. That's an insurance company that distributes health plans here in the Philippines. If you research health insurance companies here in the Philippines and you do a quick Google search, Pacific Cross is gonna come up. It's a reputable company, it's a well-known company. I've had great customer service with my agent, Michael Onstadt, for Pacific Cross. He and his office are very good at customer service, and that's number one to me. I've had insurance with Michael Onstadt through Pacific Cross for just about a year now. So my advice would be get started now, get started early before you get here to the Philippines. Because once you get here, you don't wanna be worrying about what if I go in the hospital while I'm here in the Philippines. Health insurance here in the Philippines is not the same as it is in the US. It's not like an employer-sponsored health plan that maybe you're used to. Most of the health insurance payments from the insurance company are basically in hospital they're basically in hospital only coverages. You pay for the outpatient care for yourself. Tip number two, understand your coverage. Again, the first thing that you need to know, most of your coverage is gonna be for inpatient only. That's also coincidentally where most of the costs are. You only get paid for the time that you're in the hospital and some outpatient services as well. It's not a cover all expenses type of plan either. Now, Pacific Cross in particular has a wide extended network in Luzon, especially in Manila, where hospitals, they have a lot of partners that they work with that actually will take Pacific Cross the moment you go into the hospital and they will direct pay to that hospital and or the doctor where you incur the expense. Where in my area, they don't have that many direct payment situations. I'm gonna to have to pay out of pocket first, and then Pacific Cross will reimburse me for those costs. When you arrive in the hospital, you're gonna to have to show your ability to pay. And if you're in the Luzon area, in the Manila area, and you choose a partner hospital that is signed up with Pacific Cross, that's your ability to pay right there. But they are going to require if you go in the hospital for you to show that you have the ability to pay the bill. And I've heard horror stories. I don't know how many of them are true, but I'm sure some of them are, where you can actually be in the hospital and they're not gonna let you out until the bill is paid. Believe me, they got guards at the hospital. I've also heard it the other way where you can get out, but they do really try to prevent you from leaving before the bill is paid. And you gotta imagine why, it's not like, oh, it's just so horrible in the Philippines. It's a horrible thing to do to people. No, I mean, it's just harder for hospitals to get their money here. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But again, Pacific Cross has a large network in Manila and it's not a commercial for them. I actually have my health insurance with them. I don't make any commission on Pacific Cross. That might not be a bad idea, but having said that, they don't endorse my channel. They don't support my channel. I work with them on my personal health insurance. That's who I decided to go to. 
But again, if you are in Manila area, if you are in the Luzon area, there's a lot of hospitals that you can go to. A lot of surgeries can be performed by doctors and they're gonna direct pay directly to those. And you won't have the out-of-pocket expense that a guy like me will have. So that's something definitely to consider. So definitely, definitely understand your coverage. Do some research about it. Don't think you're just gonna leave the US or the UK or Australia and you're just gonna come over here and, or Canada, you're just gonna come over here, buy a policy and it's gonna be just like it was back home. It's not going to be. Everything's different here. And that's a good thing in a lot of ways. But understand your insurance before you buy it. Tip number three, find a reputable provider. Now, I've been mentioning Pacific Cross. Again, it's not a, uh, a endorser or they don't support my channel at all. I get no commission. I'm not going to put any links down in the description so you can go to Pacific Cross. But if you want to look for... Pacific Cross, the easiest way to do it and to get a great agent is just go to Michael Onstad and I'll put his name in the uh, captions. So just look for him on Facebook. You'll find him, Health Insurance Michael Onstad, and you've got a direct line on Facebook to him. So that's what I did. So on finding a good and reputable company, I just did a quick Google search for this, uh, for this video. And I came up with a few companies. Number one, I came up with AXA Philippines. It's listed on Google as one of the top insurers for expats in the Philippines. I don't know anything about them, but they are listed on Google, so check them out. Aetna also has insurance here in the Philippines, and everybody's heard of Aetna. Cigna, another huge, huge insurance conglomerate, worldwide has international coverage, and you can get health coverage through Cigna Global in the Philippines. Or Pacific Cross, and last but not least, if you come here, you can actually, as an expat, if you get resi your residency status here, which is not too extremely difficult, you can get on an insurance, a government health insurance, which is called PhilHealth, F-I-L-H-E-A-L-T-H. -E and it doesn't provide a lot of coverage, but it does provide some coverage, and it may just be that ticket to get you in the door to the hospital where they know they're gonna get paid something. And I'm here on what's called a Balik Bayan visa, and I'm not actually a, I'm not considered to be a resident in the Philippines. I'm here most of the time. I go back for three to four months out of the year. But having said that, I'm not a resident here in the Philippines. I need to get my registration, and that's a whole nother video and something I don't know that much about. Don't consider me an expert just because I'm on YouTube or anybody else for that matter. I'm here on a Balik Bayan visa because I'm married to my uh, Filipina wife and I can stay here one year at a time, visa free. They stamp my passport. It's a privilege afforded to me from the Philippines and it can be revoked at any time if I would act up. And they don't have to give it to me, but it is a privilege and I appreciate that from the Philippines. So PhilHealth is another. PhilHealth. PhilHealth is another option. Make sure that health insurance company, when you do your research, is a reputable and financially stable health insurance company that has a big network within the Philippines that's gonna go a long way for you to be happy with your health insurance. And it will also ensure that you get quality care while you're in the hospital. Tip number four, pre-existing conditions. Most of my viewers are gonna have some sort of pre-existing condition. Now you may not, don't say, Randall, hey, I'm in perfect health. Good for you, I'm excited about that. I wish I was in perfect health and, and I feel great and I lead a pretty active lifestyle, probably not as active as I should, but I've got some health issues that, you know, kind of affect the type of insurance. Now again, with Pacific Cross, my insurance policy, I had the pre-existing conditions for the first 12 months of my policy. My renewal is coming up actually next Friday, and I have to renew, so I'm going through that process right now of trying to figure out which plan that they can offer me and which plan that I want to pay for. So my issue is this. Yes, I can get coverage for those pre-existing conditions now, but I paid right around 3000 dollars last year for the whole year and I thought that was reasonable and affordable enough 
But coming renewal, if I want that same policy and I want those pre-existing conditions to be paid for from now on, my policy goes up by over $2,000 this year, which means it'll be $5,000, a little over $5,000 for the coverage this year if I get the same policy, the same limits, and it pays everything the same, and it covers all of those pre-existing conditions. So I've got high blood pressure. I've got some cardiovascular issues. I've had in the past, they said I had some gallstones. So these things, anything heart related, anything stroke related, anything blood pressure related, gallstone related, Pacific Cross is not gonna cover me. Now, I'm not complaining about that. They're an insurance company. They're like all insurance companies. They're gonna mitigate every risk that they can. So I need to make a decision. Do I lower my coverages? Do I go ahead and pay the higher price? Or do I just keep the same policy I have for about the same price and just keep the pre-existing conditions and if something happens in that situation, I have to pay out of pocket. So that's what I'm facing right now. If you've been through that kind of situation, maybe you're an expat in the Philippines and you went down this road, please go down in the comments below and give me some advice on that. That's what I'm facing right now. Age also will greatly affect the price of the coverage that an insurance company can offer you here, like anywhere else. Now my first year of paying with my insurance policy, I had a $2,500 deductible and I had a high limit, a million dollar, a million dollar limit on my coverage, which is really high here in the Philippines. You won't spend a million US dollars here or half a million US dollars here in the Philippines on any kind of medical treatment. I'm saying there might be that one that you might, but it's super almost non-existent. But I will say this, going back to my policy and it increasing in price, it's still five times cheaper than if I had to buy the same coverage in the United States. And I have another video about that that you can watch and it tells the whole story of why I chose my health insurance in the Philippines, why I decided to get my medical insurance here instead of keeping it back there. Plus, you know, I needed it here anyway and I actually let that go. So. That's the situation I'm in. Tip number five, evaluate the additional benefits on your policy. Now, this is something you might not think about. My policy, for example, if, if it's an emergency and I'm required emergency evacuation treatment, there's a coverage for that. If, if I have to be repatriated back to the United States because of a medical condition, Pacific Cross is gonna pick up the tab on that, according to their guidelines, is as long as you don't exceed certain maximums. So that's a big help. I mean, one thing I would recommend is look at how much on Google, just, just do a Google search. Sorry for the noise here in the Philippines, but I'm in the Philippines and there's a lot of noise here. But look at the cost, just Google the cost of a bypass, say a single bypass surgery in the United States. And then Google a single bypass surgery in the Philippines. You'll be shocked by the price difference and the, how much cheaper it is here in the Philippines. I, I looked at a gallbladder surgery last year because I thought I may have to go. It turns out I didn't and I'm feeling great now. But it was like $25,000 uh, at least in America. And that's just to remove your gallbladder if that's what they do here. I think I could get away for about eleven to eighteen hundred dollars, and it's in a it's in a pretty good hospital. So, you know, the hospital costs are so much less here. So you got to figure that in as well. Another additional benefit that you want to look at is my policy covers me while I'm back in the United States for a period of up to ninety days, and in any calendar year. I can go back to the United States for 90 days and Pacific Cross will cover my medical experience expenses there. Now, last year I went back in June and I didn't return until November. So there was a full month that I wasn't covered under Pacific Cross. And that wears on my mind a little bit while I was back in the United States. But I got back here, I'm covered. So, you know, back in the saddle again. Another benefit that's on my policy, and you might want to look at it when you're researching yours, is 
the return of mortal remains. And wow, what a heavy, what a heavy phrase that is. But, you know, let's face facts, folks. We're all going to pass away. And we don't know when, but we're not going to be able to do anything when that time comes. And if it happens in the Philippines and you want to be buried back in the United States or the UK or wherever you came from, then that's going to cost your Filipina. And and if you're married and you're you're here and, and you're married to a Filipina, it's going to cost her a lot of money to send your body back if that's your wishes. Now, you're not going to have any say either way. But wouldn't it be a lot easier for her if your health insurance had a coverage for that that would help her with the cost of sending your body back and having you buried maybe around where your immediate family was from. You know, your brothers, sisters, mother and father. We've got an old cemetery back in the United States, back in Missouri. Where already I've got a brother that passed away in 1983. My mother has passed away. So those graves are already there, are already there. So, you know, if that's a wish, that's an additional benefit that you need to be looking at. Remember, your health is your most valuable asset, especially when living abroad. Take your time and do your research and select the best coverage and the best company for you. Make sure you choose the right health insurance for your expat experience here in the Philippines. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're my hero. If you have any questions, I can't, I'm not an expert. I'm not an insurance agent. I would refer you to my agent, Michael Onstat. He'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, but do your research. I, I'm really glad that you, you know, you followed this, this far. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're over now over 5,000 subscribers. I never thought it would be that big. I appreciate the community and I, I'll be the first to admit. I'm a guy who puts up videos. I don't chit chat a whole lot, uh, but I appreciate each and every one of you. We actually just surpassed 475,000 views on the channel. Blows me away. I never thought it would be like that. And so I appreciate all, all the viewers today and I'll see you next time.